Well, hello, everybody. This is Ron Legrand and Mr. Ted Thomas back for another video in our series of four. We had so many questions, and I've got so many questions here that I'm going to read. We could not get them in the last two sessions, so we're going to we're going to do a session today and probably another one tomorrow. And I'm going to get all these questions answered. So you have before you the world's leading expert on tax liens and tax deeds and so forth. So I thought we'd pick all of the brain he's got left because, you know, you know, he's kind of old. So <laughs> we better get out of there before he loses it. So. Yeah, yeah. Before yeah, they yeah. put me in the nursing home. <laughs> well, I don't know if I want to go there right now. Oh, I don't want to go there now. Well, yeah. So Les, before we get started, so we're so limited on time, why don't you just give us a recap of the last two uh, videos that we did. It just brings up the date for those that aren't uh, are watching for the first time. Okay, good. So if you just tuned in, uh, uh, my expertise is tax lien certificates and tax deeds. So let me first explain tax lien certificates. Uh, every property in the United States has a tax, a property tax, and all of us real estate investors are certainly used to that. So now let's think about what happens if they don't pay the tax. So about somewhere between two and 3% of the people in the United States just somehow don't get their tax paid. Sometimes they move away, sometimes they pass away, sometimes they just forget to do it. So the government has a collection problem, and that problem is uh, they can't get the money. So what they do is they issue a piece of paper, I'll just reach over here and grab one, just a piece of paper about this size, and it says tax lien on it, and uh, you and I can buy one of those certificates and pay someone else's tax. Now, I know what you're saying, oh my God, I don't want to pay anybody else's tax. Well, you do, because in some states you can make 18% on your money if you buy one of those certificates. Other states it's 16, others it's all the way up to 24%. So that's what a tax certificate is. But here's the important thing if you're an investor. If you're an investor, if you buy this tax list certificate, what will happen is if the people don't pay you, and this is what you're going to like, if they don't pay you, then you're going to own the property for just paying those back taxes. And you'll own the property without a mortgage on it. So we'll talk more about that as we go along. But that's, mm -hmm. that's not what a tax certificate is. Now, half of the states sell these certificates. The other half of the states, what they do is they actually confiscate. Now visualize, they're going to come out and they're going to seize the property. That means they kick the people out and then they sell the property. So depending upon what state you live in, and we'll cover both, not to worry, you can either live in a state where they sell tax lien certificates or you could live in a state that sells tax deeds, which means they're actually going to sell the property. Now when they sell the property, in most cases the government is just trying to collect their tax. So they sell these properties for sometimes 10 cents, 20 cents on the dollar. So they're really a low price deal. So it's a nice way to, uh, to have a business and this is available all over the United States. Now in both cases, when you buy a tax lien certificate or you buy a tax deed, the mortgage has been wiped out by the government. Now the government does that by giving due process. I won't cover that now, but that's what we covered on the first two videos. We talked about tax liens and we talked about tax deeds. So not to worry, we'll go through this many times. I'm actually gonna do a three day workshop coming up here at the end of the month of May. We'll talk about that in just a minute. All right, well, um, we also made the point that this is about the safest kind of investment that you can do because it is backed by the government. Your money comes from the government, not an individual. Right. And um, we can do them in any state, from any state. And also there's a huge list of them. In fact, we got a big sale coming up here it was on the 27th. They moved it back because of the virus. But every month, every year, we'd have a huge sale here in Jacksonville in May. I've been to it a couple of times, bought a couple of properties from it. Right. Um, in fact, I still own one of them, 14 acres of land that we bought for 200 nice. grand. And uh, after we rezoned it, it appraised for 1.6 million. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I got some questions here for you. So let me just read them if you don't mind. Sure. Um, Let's see. Is this something that the average person can do? do oh, I no, any, any, yes, yes, definitely. Anybody can do this. Uh, some tax certificates only sell for $1,000. For example, the average house in Florida is, uh, let's say, 150000 So the tax on that property is only going to be uh, a few thousand dollars a year. It could be up to yeah. $3,000. So uh, it's a small investment to get started, but you have a lot of leverage because for, for that small investment, you tie up the property. You control the property as long as you own the tax certificate because it's the priority lien, it's ahead of the mortgage. 
what you're telling me is my background is irrelevant. My education is irrelevant. My age is irrelevant. I mean, look at you, you're doing it. Uh, my experience is irrelevant. Do need a little money, but not very much. Right. And as we said on the last video, if you can, you can always borrow that money at some really low rate because about the minimum you're going to get on these things is 16, 18%, isn't it, Ted? And right. Well, uh, yeah, let me just name off those different interest rates. That's a good, uh, good question. So, yes, anybody can buy them. Uh, the, the only qualification is, did you have money to buy it? And that's why people overseas could buy it. So you could be in Canada, you could be in the United Kingdom, yeah. you could be in Australia, and you could buy these online. And so you only need a, a small amount of money. So uh, it's taxes, generally speaking, now not in the Northeast where, you know, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New York, they have very high taxes. But here in, the, in most of the South, taxes are about about 1% of the value. So $100,000, you can figure the tax is going to be at least $1,000. That'll give you an idea. Well, there also are a whole lot of land without buildings available in these things, uh, especially if you happen to be looking for lots to maybe build houses on or buildable lots to sell houses. Uh, some of them are in a marginal area. Some of them aren't. Uh, of course, with a little bit of training, you better get that training in there because if you're not careful, you'll yeah. buy a worthless piece of. <laughs> uh, this is what I. This is what I tell people. Um, uh, you're more familiar with uh, open and like rangeland and open land than I am. I've always been a kind of urban guy to buy, but at each auction, so people know this, and they really should take it. It's my strategy, actually, uh, which I've taught for years, is to buy your first one by a residential lot. Because most people aren't looking for that. They're looking for houses. Everybody's looking for houses. So sometimes the bidding goes up on the houses, whereas those residential lots, people don't know what to do with them. You certainly do, and you teach people what to do on it. But I say buy those residential lots because the price goes down so much. I mean, the tax might be, be uh, $1,000 or $2,000, uh, on a, a lot that's worth uh, forty or $50,000. I mean, well, look that's, at, a look at mine. that's a great deal. That's yeah, a good uh, example. They, they, yeah, By the they, way, sell, they sell well, too, by just putting up signs. You, a, a realtors that sell those yeah. lots, or all of the builders like to do that. But, you know, I had a strategy. I'm just going to tell you about it. I had one guy. He made a lot. He makes, makes a lot of money. So he actually buys some of those lots, and he, he'll get like a thirteen or a $15,000 value, and he'll spend $600, and then he gives it to Habitat for Humanity. No and he gets $13,000 credit, and he only mm -hmm. spends 600 bucks. That's tax credit. That means thirteen hundred. He don't pay the IRS. Exactly. Exactly. A lot. So I uh, thought that was good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that kind of works, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. Um, like I know we got people wondering why would somebody let their property go to a sale and lose it with the taxes? It's the biggest question. Now, there's a bunch of reasons for this, and first, certainly don't think everybody that doesn't pay their taxes is bad. First of all, sometimes people pass away and they don't have any heirs. They don't have any kids. They don't have any, so there's no aunts and uncles in the family and nobody knows. So the property will go to tax sale. Another reason is, uh, for example, uh, Ron and I live here in Florida. People come from Michigan. They come from Wisconsin. They find the values very good. So they buy a property, but they don't change the mailing address. So the bill is always going to Florida and they don't come down next year and pick up their mail. There's another reason right there. But one of the biggest reasons is probably the fact that uh, people that are wealthy, they give their kids homes and they don't realize, the kids don't realize you have to pay taxes on these properties. And so they don't pay the tax bill. And that's another reason these properties go. So we're not taking <laughs> properties away. The government's mm -hmm. gonna take the property anyway. And there's a lot of people that own property that just can't afford to pay the taxes on them. It's just that simple. Right. Especially when they have a downturn in income and they put it off and they put it off and they put it off till finally they can't put it off anymore. Then they're scrambling to get the money to pay the taxes. So uh, there's just a big long list of reasons why. You know what I teach, Ted? Quit asking why and ask what, when, and how because you're never going to live long enough to answer why, 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 why people do the things that they do. I don't yeah, exactly. That's a really that's a good thing to yeah. teach. I mean, maybe I'm going to start doing the same thing. That's a good idea. Yeah. You know why? All right. Well, um, how about, can I do this with my IRA or other pension plans if I'm in control of them? 
Oh, yeah, a pension plan is perfect. As a matter of fact, when you buy a tax certificate, they will ask you that question. Do you want to put it in your name? Do you want to put it in a company name? Or do you want to put it in your IRA? So that's very common. And that's a good way to do it because all the gain, of course, then is uh, tax-free. So that's very good. Yeah, um, and there's really no liability. I guess well, there, there is no liability until you buy the property at a tax deed sale. But on a tax certificate, there is no liability. No, no, so no. Maybe... Uh, I mean, I don't like putting anything in the name of the IRA or public record, but I'm not sure we want to get into that conversation right now. Yeah, yeah, that's surprising. I, I teach people, folks, to have their IRA form an LLC, and then uh, the IRA is insulated, and uh, the LLC might be on public record, or use a paper trust, but let's don't do that right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, well... Uh, how many, let's say you buy tax certificates, Ted, any idea what percentage of those uh, will actually go to a tax deed sale? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, as a matter of fact, less than 3% of all the properties will go through the complete default process. So it's less than three. Now, a state like Florida, it's about 1%. So if there were a thousand tax liens issued, less than 1% of those would end, you'd end up getting the property. But when the mm -hmm. people do get the property, I mean, there's a huge, massive amount of, uh, of return because the difference between the value and what they yes. pay is so high on a tax deed. Now, uh, keeping in mind that half of the states sell tax deeds, that simply means like a place like New York or California, they're actually selling the deed to the property and they have, some of the sales in California will have it's not unusual in Los Angeles to have over 2,000 properties available at every sale. So it's a big, big deal. Uh, yeah, and uh, it, it, I'll tell you right now, in Jacksonville, it's a big deal because um, uh, we're doing it online now. By the way, yes. some cities won't let you do it online still, huh? Right. So, so well, behind the times. Yeah, well, Jacksonville's very uh, progressive. You know, um, over the years since they... Years ago, they had a treasurer that got a little bit old and didn't do very much, but the young women that have come and taken over the tax departments, they've gone out and uh, put this thing online. So they had the last few auctions in Jacksonville been well over uh, what, 100 properties and more that they've been willing to sell at these auctions. And properties are selling for 10 cents, 20 cents, and 30 cents on the dollar. Now, of course, if you go about 30 cents on the dollar, I'm going to be the first one to tell them if you come to my class, don't pay more than 30 cents because if you don't get a chance to look inside. There might be some problems. Yeah, well, there are a few things you should do before you go bidding anyway. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, yeah. One of those things, you might want to verify that there's a house on this property <laughs> before you go bidding on it. Yeah. There's a house on it. It's yeah, not actually, we teach a, a seven-step process. I won't go through it now. When we're teaching it, we, we start out with the research. Uh, we're at, we're at, we have a whole team of people just do research. So you can sit on your rusty dusty at home or in your office and you can know 80% of what you need to know about the property, but there's no excuse for not going out there and looking because if you don't Somebody have a satellite to. picture tomorrow of what it looks like, you shouldn't buy that property. You just yeah. should do what we've already taught, look at the property. So you should be doing this somewhere where you got boots on the ground. Yes, or there's companies you can oh. hire to do that now. Yeah. You can hire oh. an Uber driver to do it. You can hire a real estate broker. You can hire a paralegal. There's lots yeah. of people that do it. And now everybody has a camera. I don't have my camera in front of me, but they just go take camera pictures of it. Yeah, They're good enough. Right. They're 10 pic a lot of pixels yeah. now. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody understands there's a lot of pieces of land out that are literally worthless. Yeah. And yeah, yeah what the heck if you buy them, it ain't going to cost you more than a few hundred dollars probably anyway. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you have to get a piece of worthless land along the way, so what? Go grow something on it. Yeah. Whatever. Well, they're going to find out. Um, I tell people this, and it's, I've been doing the same thing for, I started 30 years ago, but I've been doing teaching people for 25 years. So I don't have as many different, very things that I teach like you, but I specialize in this. And I just tell people, look, this is a safe, secure business, but you have to keep it that way. And it's an abundance. So there's always going to be too much. For example, there'll always be too many properties at the auction. There'll always be too many tax lien certificates. And we actually have classes now where we show people how to buy the leftovers and not take risk and not get into a bidding war. So that's a whole new part of our program that we teach in that three-day workshop. People didn't do that just even five years ago. You know, as I think about it, we used to go to a lot of house auctions. 
uh, back when they were plentiful. And I bought as many after the auction as I bought during the auction because half of them fall out anyway and don't ever get closed. Exactly. The guys don't go up and pay for it. If you don't pay for it, then you're then then uh, there's, a, there's a good opportunity to buy there. Absolutely. Yeah. It's good. Right here, we have to have the money within 24 hours. Right. And, and um, I just looked at the rules. You have to put a deposit up, a very low deposit. I think it's, what, 5% of what you think you want to buy? 5%. Yeah. You have to put up more than that. It used to be 200 bucks. Yeah, so Jacksonville used to be two hundred bucks. Yeah, well, yeah. that's the minimum. Yeah, yeah. Incidentally, you are going to be speaking at our summit this week, right? And um, you're going to go through this whole process step by step. But I think we should probably be telling folks that you are set aside three days at the end of this month to teach this stuff in depth. Uh, you want to do that now, or? Yeah, let's just take a minute or two and discuss that, folks. If you're watching this video, the reason Ron and I put in the time is so you can get an idea of what the business is. But if you set time aside, you're going to be home probably anyway. So why don't you set the time aside on the 27th, 28th, and 29th. All right, that's three days during the week. And we'll start a little late in the morning or go to maybe 5 o'clock at night. And we'll have online instruction for three days. Now, it won't just be me. Uh, what I have is I have a team of people that have been with me for a number of years, and it's a team of people that are coaches and guides. And what they do is they'll show you, well, like one coach has an expertise at buying in, in places like Michigan, where in the second sale you can buy for $100. Wouldn't you like to learn that? Then mm -hmm. another, the other coach will show us how to buy open land. He buys a lot of open land, and he's learned how to interview the right brokers to get them sold. And then we have a, a, so we go through the whole process like that. So I'm going to teach you, I can't with Ron and I here, but I'm going to teach you how to do this online. By that, I mean, you're going to be able to sit wherever you're sitting now watching us, and you'll be able to do this whole process online. So I have people making six-figure incomes online, never leaving home. So that would be good for you to learn. Now, this is a free event, and it's three full days. I wouldn't miss if I were you. Now, here's some of the other ones that people ask me about. Uh, we live, we're lucky. Now, my favorite state is Georgia. Now, my okay. family, I'm living in Florida. Florida. I like Florida. But I go to Georgia because in Georgia, if I pay the taxes, they give me a, a deed to the property. Now, it's redeemable. So the people got a whole year to come in and buy that deed back from me. So they, all they got to do is pay the taxes. And when they pay it, they have to give me back all my money. Now, I say they give back all your money plus 20%. So if they do that in 10 days, I get 20%. If they do that mm. in 40 days, I get 20%. All right, so that's a, that's, a, that's a really great investment. If they don't pay me all year, I pray that they'll go into the next year because in the first year, you get 20%. In the, in the second year, you get 30%. And then it's 40% the year after that. So uh, once people come to my event and they watch this, they'll just go, Ted, how come nobody told me about this? This has been <laughs> the law in the United States for 200 years. I didn't make it up. I mean, when I started studying 25 years, nobody would believe me. They'd say, are you kidding? Are you crazy? I said, well, wait a minute. Don't believe me. I can show you how to look it up online. You can look up the statute. Now, folks, if you don't know the statute, it's the law made by the legislature. Anybody can look up a statute. And there it is. It's written right there. I mean, I didn't make it up, but I got a database. I'll show you how to do it. Just come to the three-day, and I'll show you how to do it. You, you'll just be astonished. It gets better and better. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll get you information, folks, on how to get uh, get uh, get yeah. to that because because it is free. So, so uh, we're out of uh, time on this one, Ted. Okay. All right. Good. Well, folks. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks to Ron for allowing us to be together. I'm going to look forward to see you see you this month on the 27, 28, and 29, and we'll be back tomorrow and kind of button this all up and package it nice, neat, neat little package. See you tomorrow. This is life changing. This is something that really is something you can do 10 to 12 hours a week. You can do maybe even less than that, depending on your knowledge of that particular market or that system. This is an opportunity where you can earn more than you would at a job in a matter of days, in a matter of weeks. There's not that demand for you to fit societal um, pressures of getting dressed in the morning and and making yourself up. I mean, it's it sounds silly, but it's a lot of work for women to 
have to also put on makeup and have to wear a certain outfit. You know, this is stuff you can do from your pajamas if you want. It's a lot easier than you think. It's not It's not so scary once you know, okay, you can just ask these questions. And yeah. we turned to Ted, we turned to um, all his education, we turned to the coaching staff to get the questions we have answered because they're experts. This particular property was a very nice property and in our opinion, nice enough to actually live in. For we were in 11, it total for 11,000. Both of those. And we rented that magic. at 1225 for 15 months. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we collected all the money back from our initial investment and more. And more. Um, and then after holding it as a rental for some time, then we decided, okay, the property is um, appreciating so quickly. Yeah. That Phoenix was, was really hot. We ended up selling the property and the sales price was? Uh, we had a contracted sales price of 184000 and 169000 hit our bank account.